Howdy friends, I'm not sure if this is the smartest way to make this video, but I wanted to show you all something that I'm working on. Um, there's probably a more technically advanced way to do this, and I could do it with a screen capture, but I don't know. Um, I don't know that that's, that that's useful. So anyway, um, what I wanted to show you is, um, what I'm trying to do, can I make this full screen, maybe? not much better but um what I'm working on is numerology for tarot and um I have been reading a fair amount not a you know a huge amount but I've been reading a little bit about well I'm not going to qualify it I've been reading about tarot de Marseille um and just, you know, exploring it as a system. And um, uh, I mentioned a couple books I've been reading. So the first one, I really, really liked this book. This is Tarot the Open Reading by Yoav Bendav. Um, and it's a very famous book. And it's really good. And I'm going to flip through it, even though it never really, you know, whatever. There's some... Um, it, you know, actually, this is one of the rare books I've read in a long time. We're reading the section on the the Major Arcana, actually, um, I found super helpful. And it made me think of things in a new way when it comes to them. So I'll probably reread this a couple times. Once I finish that, um, because I I can't get my hands on his deck, of course, because he unfortunately passed away, um... um and it does sound like they're going to be available at some point again. Um, but I wound up with the Jodorowsky, or Jodorowsky, or Jodorowsky, or however it's pronounced, Terra de Marseille, um, because it was the cleanest looking, um, and it was um, easily easy to get. And uh, I also got his book, um, The Spiritual Teacher in the Cards, uh, The Way of Tarot. Now, this book, I have to say, I mean, there are some sections I've... I've dog-eared and bookmarked um and it's certainly a, uh, the company that that printed this book also printed caitlin matthews um lynn orman's book and uh it's it's really good uh, like pr their quality is really good and their um i believe sort of a sustainable book binder um which is interesting i think their books are printed based on solar power anyway um this book has been a bit of a struggle in full honesty and some people really like it so that doesn't mean that the book is bad but um my primary critique and i can't even remember where i th at some point in this book um i don't remember if he explicitly calls out arthur edward Waite, um or if he alludes to him but i do i have a memory in in this book of him getting snarky on weight and there's plenty of things to get snarky about when it comes to weight but um he he then goes on and does very similar things um to what weight does and i think i've talked about this before i can't remember but um in his so this is what he calls a restored tarot de marseille or marseille tarot and uh sorry i'm trying to I'm going to close this for a sec, just so the light is a little less gross. Um, I think I did, because I remember pulling this card out. So, um, he he restored it in a way, and it feels sort of like he restored it in the same way that Wait restored the tarot in general. Like, um, in this, in his papis, he, he talks about this egg. And this is just one example, but he talks about this egg. Um, I cannot, in any other edition of a Marseille tarot, find anyone who ha who places an egg. It doesn't even look that egg-like to me. I'm being very snarky, but, you know, I guess I'm kind of a snarky person. Um, and, and the book is kind of full of these hidden symbols, um, which to me uh, seem uh, junky. <laughs> I mean... In just in the sense that I don't buy that they're there or that they were there or intended to be there. Um, because, and for some, some people, so, 
this is always where I stop myself, right? Because I get worried about offending anybody. Um, anything that has kind of an esoteric or, or, you know, divinatory quality or that, you know, exists in that land between kind of rational and whatever it is that's not rational. Um, sometimes folks need it to have a meaning greater than, it, you know, it's, it's actual meaning. Uh, and they need it to contain hidden symbols and, and such. Um, I, I don't need that. And having read a fair amount about the history of tarot, I know that it's unlikely that there were any hidden symbols. Um, I, I am among those who believe that it was just a game. Um, and to me, that makes it kind of more interesting that, you know, that it was just a game, but it's not that anymore. It, it, it evolved into something else. Um, and to me, that, that, that feels more magical than if it were designed to have done something. I mean, to, to run the risk of saying something potentially offensive, um, a, a Ouija board was designed to do exactly what it's meant to do, but I don't find it anywhere near as useful. Um, you know, um... So anyway, that's all by way of saying the, the book has been difficult because um, frequently allusions to things like that uh, make me get cranky uh, because I don't, I don't, I, I need, I need supporting evidence, I guess, um, to believe such things. And I don't think that the book does a good enough job providing me with supporting evidence. Um, f and he doesn't need it because there's a lot of, I mean, he doesn't need to fill the book with things that require supporting evidence because the things that he has to say that are just, you know, syst systematic specifically to his system are, are good enough that I, I don't, I, I don't need something that feels made up. And that's, that's been my struggle with that book. Um, it's also, I, you know, I'm not a prude, but it also, there, there's a kind of unique and very strong um uh focus on sex um which in some cases is fine in some cases just doesn't seem to make sense to me or like add add so I don't know I don't know I've really I I skipped chunks of the book um I tried to read every section of it and skip chunks and then finally after about two thirds of it I I really just started skimming because um I was I was actually getting actively frustrated with parts of it. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm just sharing with you my process. So what I did do after kind of deciding to pause on that book is I went out and I did some additional research online. And then I created this spreadsheet, which um, I'm showing you on my computer because it's it's actually so large um, right now that it would it would take up a lot of pieces of paper and um i don't know how to i don't i don't know how i'm going to go about like getting it i may try to get it printed on like a poster size something or other so that i can see it all at once but in the meantime we will we will live with digital um so what i did was i actually went through these two books um and in one in the first column i kind of used i mean obviously it's a big book so i tried to choose um keywords uh, from Bendov that um, give us the the keywords for the numeral for the numbers. So what I'm not concerned about here is specifically the majors. Um, in fact, in both of these books, what I was more interested in was how do you read minors that are completely and totally pip cards. Um, so I went and pulled um, Bendov's keywords for each of the numbers, um, and I did the same with Jodorowsky. Um, and then I went on to some websites um, that I'd looked at before. Um, and what I'll do when I publish this video is I'll actually put links to these websites uh, so that you can go and, and read the articles. Um, so there was one website called Tarot the Royal Road. This was the most unique in terms of um, numerology. Uh, and I included it because it was so profoundly different from everything else I had read. Um, um, the website Biddy Tarot. Um, this is an author. I have to go back and look at the name. Her last name is Sander. It wasn't a website that was hers. It was like one of those e-how websites sort of things. Um, but the, the numerology there I thought was interesting. 
um, Jen Shepard on Angel Paths. Um, these these wound up being the long, longest descriptions that I I and these are dramatically summarized. But um, she her website this article was very very rich and full of information. And what I tried to do was distill it <coughs> as much as I could. Um, but there was so much that I found interesting there uh, that I, I I wanted to come back and study. So that was. Um, Angel Paths website, Jan Shepard. And then what I also did was I went to um, um, some websites that focused on astrology and numerology, and I just picked one. This was Michael McLean, um, astrology-numerology.com. And I, I wanted to compare astrology numerology to the, the tarot numerology that other people had. So I created the spreadsheet so that I could kind of compare... Um, all of these uh, different varying opinions, and some of them aren't varying at all. Uh, one of the one of the reasons why I put Ben Dov and Jodorowsky together is that Ben Dov was Jodorowsky's student for a few years, um, and uh, interestingly, I buy Ben Dov's. Uh, I buy what he's selling a little bit more, uh, but you know it is what it is. But I wanted to look at them closely because they clearly happen to. Uh, um, they clearly happen to have a relationship. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to study these and uh, read through them. And eventually what I'm going to do is, is distill all of that down, um, into kind of, uh, some easy for me to remember keywords and phrases and light and shadow aspects of these concepts. Um, so that I, ha you know, sort of have, this will eventually be mine. Uh, and then that I will actually print and 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 kind of explore. So um, this is how I am working my way through learning the numerology of the pip cards. Um, uh, so this is this is sorry. I'm trying to like not show my text messages. Um, this is uh, anyway. It's just something interesting I thought I would share with you because it is something I'm focusing on this year. Uh, because it is interesting. One of the reasons why I'm so interested in um, reading with decks that are kind of primarily pip decks is, um, I've talked about this before, is because of The Wild Unknown, which is a deck I probably wouldn't have bought 10 years ago, having seen it, uh, because I would have thought I couldn't read it. Um, and in fact, when I did buy it, I thought, oh, well, I'm just really drawn to this, and everyone's talking about it, and I want to see it in person. Um, I probably won't be able to read with it. And then I, I actually wound up getting really good readings with it. And one of the reasons why is that after years and years and years of reading, I kind of know what all the cards mean in my mind. And I shared all of that with you um, in my videos on each card. But um, I realized that having less scenic uh, minors... Um, freed was freeing a little bit and i felt less beholden to the image and less distracted by the image and it did it actually did feel more intuitive and it felt less like describing what was what i was seeing on the card and saying you know look at this person here walking with you know i i felt less like i was talking about the the artwork and more like i was talking about the experience and with time, I've, I've found that um, really exciting um, because I can kind of pull from the, you know, I, in, my, in my videos on, in, on intuition, I talked about how, you know, those very first quick thoughts that pop into your head are, are really important because that, that's intuition at work. When I'm not looking at the, the traditional, quote, traditional imagery of a card I don't feel um as 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 restricted um by that image and uh, that that's interesting to me so what I want to add to all of everything I know is is in and it's not I don't think for me anyway right now this is about discarding and close this discarding what I know about the cards I don't think after um I don't think after 17 years of reading, you can, you know, you can actually do that. Um, you know, I think to a degree, um, you know, when I pull out some, some of the cards 
um, I'm making a big mess over here, regardless of, uh, you know, what deck it is, um, time to flip this down, because I'm actually showing you cards you can't see, um, uh, regardless of what deck it is, I, you know, I, I think I'll, I'll always see when I, I'll always see when I look at these two cards, um, the juggling act and the, and the building of the cathedral, um, I, you know, I don't think that, that I'll ever not see that. And I don't know that I'll ever look at the three of cups, uh, sorry, the three of coins or the three of pentacles and, and not somehow see collab collaboration in there. But, um, by adding into this, this reading and, and this work, um, what I feel like I'm doing is just adding another layer, you know, so I, cl I closed this and now I'm going to look at it again. Um, so, you know, what I, what I have here for my three, um, are things like movement and creation, dynamism, flow, fertility, forces of nature. Um, that's been Dov. Uh, Jodorowsky is bursting apart, creation or destruction, creative explosion without experience or purpose. So, I mean, you do, you do kind of get the, the energy of the Waitsmith that I've always read, but there's this kind of different, different energy in addition to it. So I feel like, um, exploring the numerology, uh, isn't necessarily going to replace what I've spent the last, you know, couple decades learning, but it will add another layer to it. Um, and, and when, you know, when I lay out the cards, I may or may not see the Waitsmith image, but I'm not going to feel any pressure to push it away or pull it towards me. Um, you know, if, if I see, um, a creative explosion, as Jarofsky calls it, um, or the forces of nature at work, uh, in, within the three of, and those, those, uh, those descriptions I just gave you are of threes in general, not specific to the three of pentacles, but, uh, uh, an, uh, um, a bursting apart or creation in everyday life, um, that, that adds a different color, color to the reading, you know, so I get collaboration with the three of coins, but if I get like, a um, a bursting of creation, a burst of creation in collaboration. So the Jodorowsky gives me the numerology of, of a burst of creation. Um, Wait gave me the collaboration that I see in Pamela Smith's drawing. And then I add the pentacles to it or the coin energy to it, the earth energy to it, the collaboration in life, the bursting forth of creativity in life um, has a more uh, potent uh, and and broader idea. So people collaborating to create life suddenly becomes not just about building a cathedral, which has always been this idea for me of like building something larger than yourself. Collaborating to create something in life could mean, um, you know, getting together to have a baby uh, to people working on, you know, trying to get pregnant, which this, you know, you get the sort of two looking into one. So, um, it just it just adds a lot of interest to me um so it's not about throwing away weight but it's about um what came before to a degree um what's come after to a degree and just sort of as we do we filter we filter tarot through our own perceptions and our own learning and that's why every reader is so different um and it's why i encourage people to read every book they can get their hands on watch every video they can get their eyes on because um you, you're not you're never going to be able to copy anyone else but what you do get is all of this experience and you're going to remember the stuff that you need at the time you need it so i may never think about the three of pentacles as two people trying to conceive again or i may think about it uh three years or four years or ten years from now when someone um asks me for a reading and i suddenly think doink oh oh you're you're trying to have a baby you know what I mean? Or you're, this is, this is where your energy is right now. Your life is about creating a burst of creation. It's about creating life, right? So anyway, once again, I'm just rambling, but I thought I would share with you what I've been working on. So I will put the links to all of the websites that I sourced this from so that you can uh, see the full text of them because I did definitely distill. Um, and uh, also, so obviously the authors get their due credit. Um, the things that I can't link to are the books. Um, those are, you just, you know, I got them on Amazon. So, uh, the two books, I'll put the titles of The Way of the Tarot by, uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky and Tarot, The Open Reading by Yoav Bendov. 
Be good. Have a great week. I'll talk to you soon.